Good evening. I'm Chuck Olenek, a Ukrainian-American baptized with the name Yaroslav, which is also the name that I use in the historical reenactment group, the Society for Creative Anachronism. I decided that the best way to share my um, research on Slavic folklore and mythology, well, actually Eastern European folklore and mythology, was to put together videos and put them up on my YouTube channel, hoping that might help people out that are in the society who are looking at possibly doing an Eastern European persona. Well, in the previous video, I discussed something called the Black Wedding, which sounds really ominous, and it kind of is. It was something practiced by Ukrainians and Russians and Bulgarians and Serbs and Romanians, and it's a mixture of like a funeral and a wedding. And it's organized when a young woman or young man dies unwed. And that's like, you know, marriage, huge rite of passage, right? Relying, going back to my anthropology degree. Um, and if a person doesn't become a, you know, mem if a person doesn't go through this rite of passage, it's not like they're really a uh, full member of the community. And in the afterlife, they can't really join the community of the dead and join the spirits of the ancestors. Well, there's a parallel in uh, Bulgarian culture. So that means I get to don my hat from Bulgaria and continue with this. Lazarice, also known by its Bulgarian name, Lazaruvane is a South Slavic traditional procession during the Eastern Orthodox feast of Lazareva Supota. That's corresponding to, but distinct from Lazarus Saturday in other Orthodox churches, the day before Palm Sunday, the Saturday that Orthodox Christians relate to one of the wonders worked by Jesus Christ the resurrection of Lazarus. Okay, the folklore is different, even though the name does refer to Lazarus. In Bulgarian mythology, Lazarus was the master of the woods and leafage. And he's got an ax in his hand and he tills the people's fields. And this mythical champion of goodness personifies the borderline between earthly existence and the next world and that's pretty central to the ritual songs and the dances of Lazarki girls. Similar to Christmas carol singers they chant blessings for health and fertility. There are blessings offered to hosts, to girls and to lads, to brides and to children. Lazarki tour all the houses in the village and everywhere their hosts give white eggs and coins to them. Drawing a symbolic circle, the end of the tour finally brings them to the starting point. On the next day, Tzvetnitsa, or Palm Sunday, the ritual of Kumechina is performed. It's young girls, usually about 16 years old, gather by the river outside the village where water goes swiftly. They carry what are being called dolls, but they're really elongated uh, ritual loaves of bread. And they're placed on something that floats and the girls let them go floating on the water. The girl whose bit of bread wins the race, traditionally she gets to get married first. And in traditional uh, beliefs, any girl who's been a Lazarka girl and has gone through the ritual shall not be taken away by a dragon. So participation in the ritual, that's mandatory. And only after a girl's gone through this is she going to be allowed to wear a wreath or flowers on her head, dress in embroidered shirts, wear jewelry such as necklaces and earrings and rings and bracelets. And traditionally, a girl who has never participated in the ritual may not get married or get engaged simply because a dragon is going to come and abduct this girl and make her his bride. Except I got to bring up a contradiction. 
And I also got to explain dragons. So let me explain Bulgarian dragons first. Okay, so this is not a traditional Bulgarian dragon. By the way, the male dragon is called Zme, which is kind of confusing because you run into the name Zme for a lot of different dragons in a lot of Eastern European folklore. The female is called a Lamia. But again, this is not going to be the shape of the dragon we're going to be concerned with. Okay. The Zme is depicted as a man, but he's got wings under the arms, which seems like a really inconvenient place to put them. And he often tries to entice one of these girls who has not gone through uh, the ritual into marrying him and telling her of the riches she's going to get. And this is despite having their own dragon women. So his maids can often fall in love with human girls and will secretly visit them at night. And such women gradually begin to stay away from others and really not care about their appearance as their Zmei lovers take over. And if persuasion doesn't work, the Zmei resorts to abducting the maiden. So dragon lovers, they can obsess the girl and you know, make love with her and she can transform in some cases, growing a dragon's tail. And there's at least one story that I've run into where the girl in desperation is trying to rip her tail out. Actually, the description was bite it off, which I was trying to imagine that position. Um, and failed to do so and ends up dying. And her friends basically buried her by a well and they perform a dance, which was not a normal circle dance, but actually a snake dance in the area of the well. Um, her children, if male, they end up with the wings under the arms. And the bride's going to suffer from depression, and she's pretty much ostracized from the community. Hey, you're not one of us anymore. And the Zmei continues to make love to her until she becomes weak and finally dies. So pretty much an unhappy ending. So in order to prevent this, girls protected themselves with various magical actions like um, bathing in a mixture of herbs and quite frankly they also tried to get married as soon as possible. In case the girl ended up attracting a dragon, still it wasn't too late for her. Her mother would quickly organize the wedding to save her daughter. And to me that's kind of the contradiction because if the girl had not gone through the proper rituals, then how is she going to be allowed to get married? Because the dragon is preying upon girls who haven't gone through the ritual. But that's apparently the solution. In researching this, I hadn't really found that the... Uh, wedding ceremony was taking place in a cemetery setting or that it was taking place at night uh, or anything like that but there's this writer Ivanichka Georgievna she wrote a book uh, Bulgarian mythology where she was making parallels to the you know black wedding tradition and I think what she was going for was the idea of okay you know the rites of passage and you know i think that in some cases it's been kind of overlooked that maybe you know this is happening because uh bulgarian villagers do not want you know dragon children running around in their village and that could be the same thing as like trying to prevent uh, young maidens from becoming a Rusalka. All right. And you may have kind of caught the undercurrent there of, you know, dealing with sexual energy and 
probably life lessons for, you know, young ladies. Okay, that's it on the Black Wedding stuff. So I'm going to move on to another topic. And then I'll probably come back to some other wedding ritual that has to do with folklore. Until then, do pobachinya.